morning everyone, it's uh, great to, to be with you just now and uh, the, we're going to try and rush through this to the extent that I'll leave you with some clarity. What I'm hoping to do from here is that you can look at this and go, okay, there's some fellow stood in front of me for the next 30 minutes um, and he's not going to take up any of my lunch break and uh, he's going to explain why on earth is it that accountancy firms are launching apps. I mean, what's, what's the point? Are they a gimmick? Are they a commercial tool? Is there some sense in it? What's the creation and what's this thing being about? Um, and a tiny little bit of background, um, our company is Insight Marketing. We've been running about 30 years, uh, working with accounting firms of all shapes and sizes across the UK, doing all manner of different sales and marketing. And we built this business a couple of years ago and launched it in January 13, uh, called My Firm's App. Thanks, Simon. Bless you. Um, called My Firm's App because our clients started to come to us and said, Dan, our, our, our clients, our, the end businesses, they're using these smartphones all the time. And the premise to this is really very simple. How many of you in the whole room this morning have got a, a smartphone of some description or a tablet? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And it's much the same out there. And so it's very hard to buy a phone now that's not a smartphone. And the way that people use these phones is using apps. The telephone calls that you make is using the telephone app. The emails that you respond to are using the email app. The maps, the train bookings, the so on and so forth are all using apps. That's the way the interface has been designed to work, just like Windows was designed to work on a PC. And so if that's how people are using it now, and that's where folks have shifted to, how do you and I respond to that? What is it that we can give them that's going to put our firms on the devices they've now got with them all the while that's actually going to be useful to them? And if it can go beyond that into some real points of value and referral generation, all the better. So we've built these now for about 320 firms. We've got about 40,000 end users using them. Uh, Tony uh, was, uh, was great. He got one of these built for the ICPA probably about nine, ten months ago now. Uh, and we're doing with those for Gabel and BTC out the back as well. So these things are really starting to take hold in the market. But the question does still remain, are they working? Are they just someone who's actually quite good at selling apps and they're just a bit of a gimmick? Um, or have they got some real functional value? So we're going to try and go through this uh, at a reasonable pace to leave you with that clarity at the end of it. They go, right, I get this and I know what I need to do about it from here, whatever the right answer is for your firm. The first thing is that this is a blueprint that's available to work for all firms. So on, yesterday morning on the way down, I sat down with Streets and Lincoln, a top 40 firm who've got one of these, and it works for them. Uh, a few months ago, I sat down with another one of our clients, Elizabeth Sanders in the Thames Valley, who's got 50 clients. It works for her. So it's across the spectrum here, and it creates a real level playing field. So it's not about how big your firm is now, or even so much about the mix of your clients. It's about how can I put something that's going to work for them that means you don't have to spend tens of thousands in trying to develop something yourself, which even the big firms don't really have a budget for. What this does is creates an app that works for both Apple and Android. Now, between them, they account for about 94% of the distribution of devices in the UK. So you're covering the vast swathe of where people are here, and it puts you in the store. This is about having your own firm's presence in both the Apple and the Android stores. Just to give you an example of that, the stores have become quite a search engine these days. We launched a new one for one of our existing clients uh, who works for actors in the entertainment industry and we called the app Acting for Entertainment and we put it into the App Store and before he's done a jot of marketing, hadn't told a soul about it, he's got 72 downloads of the app because people are going on to the store and looking for these sorts of things now. And the, the results that have ended up staggering us, because if we go back to the beginning of this, we built this as, um, as because our clients came to us and said, look, we want something that's a little bit different. What, what's new? What have you got that's, that's next for us? And so we decided to get our guys around the table and we built an app and designed, uh, intended it for be simply a marketing tool, something they could go to a meeting and say, we're a bit different, look, we've got an app. And that was what we thought it was going to be. What happened next uh, is what surprised us. It's the end users that really loved them. And it's the, they've ended up leading us ever since. So with these around 40,000 end users we've got of the apps now, we've been very fortunate, we've learned a lot these last 18 months, of the feedback they've given via firms to say, actually, this is what we want inside the app. Like I say, around 40,000 now um, end users. And this is what they said they wanted from what was first created. They said, we'd like social media integration. We want to be able to click through and have a look at you on LinkedIn, or if you've got Facebook or Google Plus profiles, we want to be able to link through there, because those are also things that they do on their phones all the while, and they want that connection to be easy. I don't know how many of you might use Skype with your clients at all, but that was something that we got feedback from as well, so you can now click the button to make a Skype call from the app itself. They wanted more calculators, not just because they like calculators, but because they want specific things that they're using on a frequent basis, so the app has been updated with those. They want to be able to track business mileage and manage receipts, I'll show you those in a moment, and also manage their income. 
they want to be able to track precious metals. Now, I didn't wake up this morning and think, I wonder what the price of palladium was, but it's on the app if you want to know. <laughs> um, but for those people who are tracking their own investments and managing their own investments, those base rates, things, shown fund prices, precious metals, they want to know where those are. Uh, and they wanted to have more integration, and that's a really important part of this, which I'll come to in a moment. They wanted one place to be able to go to. And that one place means this. Because apps are now so prolific, um, some of the brands that you'll recognise, people like Xero and Cashflow and Iris and Open Space, DocSafe, Virtual Cabinet, CCH and Pass the Waters Kluwer Group, uh, Dropbox, all these different things people have got as individual apps, Receipt Bank, some of you might know Receipt Bank, have got as different apps on their devices. And so suddenly the feedback we started to get was, we like using this stuff, but we've got too much of it. It's all over the place, we don't know what to do. And there's also this website and that web address they need to remember to go to as well. And so what they wanted to do was to pull things together into one place. So what they can do here is they've got everything on their accountants app. So they can download the Dan & Co app or the ICPA app and they can see who it is, uh, what is it that we do, who are we, how to contact us, this, the simple stuff that you would expect to see in there. They can click through to calculators, they can manage their mileage, their receipts through on there, and we can build so-called launch buttons so they can open the login to Xero, or Cashflow, or Open Space, or Dropbox. They can uh, link through to Bankstream Notes out in the back there so that they can go in and update the, the statements they've got with you, all from the one place with the one app. So it becomes much more of a portal and an instrumental tool to what it is that they're trying to do on a frequent basis. Uh, one of the firms that's a client of ours, Carter's up in Scotland, a uh, seven partner firm, I sat around the boardroom table with them a little while ago and one of them, Ian, sat back in his chair and said this is a breath of fresh air, it's the most exciting thing I've seen in accountancy in 45 years. Now you might sit there and think, well that chap needs to get a beer a bit more often and go out. Um, but the reality is, uh, he sits there and goes, I can, I can see this, he gets the potential, he doesn't understand how all the different bits come together, that's not important, I don't know how my wristwatch works but I know it tells the time and we use these things. And so he sat back, I can see how this is going to work now. And it's been an experience for many others. Why is this working so well? Well, here's some of the evidence for you in the marketplace. Back in 2012, this blue line here is the number of smartphones. The red one is personal computers, laptops and PCs. In 2012, for the first time in history, the sale of smartphones overtook PCs for the first time. And as you can see, that gap is widening ever since. That now means that the number one device that everyone uses, pretty much everyone, uses is a smartphone, not a PC or a laptop any longer. So if that's the technology they're using, what do we need to do about it? When we look at the, what the people are doing within that particular setting, then last year, 2013, 20% of the people who use these devices on a frequent basis were looking at the mobile web environment. The other 80% were looking for information, ideas, answers, tools through apps on their phone. Now that's a staggering percentage. We do a lot of digital marketing for firms as well, websites and all sorts of things to do with that. It's changed how we build websites now. Their role has changed. Five years ago, they had a different role. Two years ago, you and I would be having a different conversation. Now we've had to change what we do in order to serve firms properly because of the way that people have changed their own habits and the technology they want to use within that as well. And again, this is not, and you can see how it's changing already in 2014. This is not a great big surprise. The reason it's going that way is because that's exactly how these things are designed to work. And it makes sense to do what it is that they're supposed to do when you use those devices. The app is not a mobile website. It, it can do what a mobile website cannot. So having a website, having a mobile variation of a site is important. Uh, but it's not the panacea. It's not the thing that it's built to be any longer. A couple of years ago, that was what everyone thought was going to happen. But the tables have shifted since then. So a website can't track mileage, it can't manage receipts and income, it can't communicate in the way that an app does. One of the things that Tony's been a huge advocate of and showed us how it worked uh, is these push notifications where you send a simple message and it pops up on the screen of everyone's devices. They swipe that and it opens your app up and that delivers communication in a way that a website simply cannot and this integration as well. So websites are important but their role has shifted and now apps are the thing that people are looking to engage in. Back in May, TechCrunch released a report that said that people now search more in apps than they do on Google. That's increasing, Google is decreasing. Now, it's by no means the death knell for Google. It owns half the world, if not all the world, and it's going to be there for a while longer. Um, but the reality is that people are now searching for information answers through the app environment more so. So how do we present our practices, our firms, our businesses to people in that setting? Another thing that's important here is that, by and large, the profession do rush to systems. We want to find more efficient ways, more profitable ways, uh, more smart ways to deliver what we do. So it can increase the profitability of your firm, 
make it more effective to do what you do and make it easier for the non-accountant like I to engage what it is that we need to do and submit stuff to you. So now what we're seeing is quite a movement amongst some of the main brands that are in the industry to integrate together through these sorts of app systems. So these people here can all be linked to from the app, either direct integration such as Receipt Bank or being able to load the logins to these other systems from there so people have got it nice and easy. What that produces then is a way for a firm to have the most affordable, effective, productive and efficient way that we've seen in 30 years of working for accountancy firms and for myself it's been since 2000 for you to reach and interact with existing clients but also to interact with new ones as well. The referral generation capacity is quite fantastic with this and we'll show you how that comes together. So now you've got one place, an interface that pulls together your clients, your firm and your systems that they can use and that novelty the simplicity of usage is part of what's generating such great referrals because clients go, oh, have you seen what Tony's come up with these days? And they're telling other people about it. And because of that, it's helping to produce some new business as well. Now, before you start looking a little bit too concerned, because I can see one or two furrowed brows in the audience at the moment, um, this is not complicated to do. There's a lot of very sophisticated stuff that happens in the background. That's fine, but that's all been taken care of. That's the blueprint I was talking about at the start of this. So this is refreshingly simple for you to put in place. You don't need to have any new infrastructure. You don't need to change your IT. You don't need to have any complex setup or put a lot of time into these things. It simply works for you. We link that stuff together. So you don't need to start buying lots of new software or changing how your servers work for this to happen for you. It just works out of the box, as it were. One of the reasons why it's been so effective is because it's not salesy. Now, we love to sell. We love to measure things, we love to manage stuff, we like to make uh, sales pipelines come through and to see the output of that for firms and help to develop them. But, but what the app has done has been really surprising for us, it's been quite counterintuitive because we simply give it away. You just get this for your own firm, you give it to your clients, you give it to your prospects, I think we were talking there, we've got a reasonable database, email those people that you're not working with yet and say, good news, this is what you can do. And they guess it, you're not selling it to them, you're giving them something. But the inference around it is fantastic and how it presents you against their incumbent accountants is really quite powerful. The other good news is that you don't need to pay tens of thousands. Streets I was talking to, they referred us into another one of their affiliated firms through one of their networks, um, who I'm talking to tomorrow. Um, and they were trying to get an app curated and they were looking at £100,000 to build the app that they were looking to do. And it doesn't do a fraction of what this one has in place. And so it's normal, if you went to market to get a quote, to pay anywhere between 40 to 60 grand to get something that's not quite as effective as what we're looking at at the moment in place. That's just the nature of building apps. Whereas what you can be looking at is, and there's options beneath this, by the way, this is just to explain the one that's on show on the TV outside, it's just short of two and a half grand as a one-off payment, and then £49 a month to support it thereafter. So you've got options at 1300 another option at 900 with different functionality on to suit what you're looking to do, but the reality is you don't need to spend that sort of money any longer on these sorts of things, it will still look and feel very much like your own creation. So for the next few minutes, what I wanted to do, and as I say, the TV's out there, we can have a look at this, you can see how it interacts, you can play, play with it yourselves uh, and get a feel for the, the features and how easy and intuitive it really is to use. But let me show you what some of the, the main things that people are using on there. One of the biggest things that folks are using are the calculators. Now, I really did not think they were going to when we built this, because for years we've stood on stage and said, folks, you don't need this on your website. That's not what people go to your website for. But it, we put it into the app because people ask for it. And the reason they're using it so much, I think, is nothing more than the convenience factor. They've normally always got their phone with them, so if they're in a meeting or on a train or just mulling something over, they can press a button and get an answer. And it's your brand they're engaging every time they do so. And there's a variety of things in there. VAT saves a bit of mental arithmetic, APR ones. I'll show you this dividend example on the side here. All they need to do is to pop in a number into there and within a fraction of a second, it's produced an answer for them. And you can imagine if it's on the phone, you could scroll up and down and have a look at some of the comparisons that are in place. And um, someone like myself might use this and go, well, I can see what this is suggesting to me, but I know enough to know I still need to take advice. So I can press the contact button and it will jump me through to the contact page. I can send you a message and say, look, I'm thinking of doing this. Can we meet next Friday and chat about it in a bit more detail? So the, re the outcome has been, rather than taking work away from you, because I'm starting to answer my own questions, it's just helped to educate me more, but drive more qualified contact back into the firm with the right questions that I should be asking at the time. The other thing you've got on there are tax tables, um, the sort of main tax tables you'd expect to see, so rather than having tax cards that people like me are useless with and start losing all the while, um, then you've always got it on your phone, you can have a look at what things are, the sort of stuff you'd expect to see, what are the capital allowances, 
uh, on, on these uh, that I'm going through, what's the entrepreneur's relief on something, etc. Uh, and you can have a quick skate at that. You've got information on there that talks about who you are and what you do, so you can put up to 20 pages of your own content into here, and that's not more complicated than just copy and pasting what's on your website. You've already put stuff there that's in your website, and if you don't have a website, it's not too hard to sit down and write two or three pages, perhaps, about the key services you deliver. So as a user of your app, I can see what those are, and as a client, you might think I know everything about you, but often I don't, and so it's helpful to be able to see those. As someone who's been referred to you, it's really important to go, oh, that's a nice idea, they've, they've got an app, this stuff is, is quite interesting. What do they do? Oh, that's the sort of thing that I need. And so it's good just to share this information into one place in there. You can manage this content yourself. Uh, it's a very simple to use back-end system that helps you to do that. And likewise with your team information, either as a sole trader, you call this about me rather than about us, um, or if you've got more staff, you can put several pages in there as well. So those are some of the things that people are using. The stuff that turns the app into being something of real functional value are these couple of tools here. So things like the mileage tracker, which again was a response to what people were asking us for, and you were sharing how you went out and bought one of these yourself, um, but they're not the app, sorry, they're just a separate mileage tracker because you can get the USB things and others that you stick into the car. What this does is draw together the technology they've got on their phones already. So this stuff is really quite smart, what Apple and Android and others keep coming up with, but it sits in our pocket and doesn't really get used to its potential. So what we can do here is help to solve a problem. All they need to do is press start trip, and having pressed start trip, it's got hold of the GPS on their device. It will follow them around their journey. And at the end of that journey, they simply press the red bar now, end trip, and that's it. They can then press the black bar to uh, export that. And it immediately attaches a spreadsheet with all the locations, the distances, the dates, etc. on a spreadsheet, which can get emailed through to you. So for folks like I, who are told all the while, write your mileage down, Dan, you need to look after this stuff. I don't do it because it's the last thing on my mind when I jump into the car or to try and do something manual in the logbook that's in there. This is so simple. You pick up your phone, you press the button, chuck it on the passenger seat and crack on with what you're trying to do. And it does it all for you. So it's solving those sorts of problems that people have. And those range from consultants and GPs through to corporations who are, if you've got large corporate clients that you serve, you can give it to them to give to their own staff. And their own staff can look after it, but it's your software then, your brand that's being much more immersed into those clients' businesses. The receipt manager likewise, means they can click at the top here, press photograph a receipt, they can scroll up and down and choose the category that that expense item needs to go into. It loads the camera, you photograph the receipt, and then you've got the final page here where you say, I had lunch, uh, if you don't mind Susan, at lunch with Susan, apparently she's expensive on lunch, so £150. Um, enter in the, the box, press a button to insert today's date, choose whether it was company money or my own personal money that I used for it, any notes that were important, the soup was nice, and click save. And so within three or four seconds, I've completed that on the go. And what that produces then is me saving two or three hours a month because I've just done it as I go rather than having to sit down and pull all this sort of stuff together or worse still, just walk into your office and stuff <coughs> it on your desk and say good luck with that. So at the same point there, just like we saw with the mileage tracker, I can press a button to export those and it sends that spreadsheet over with all that information neatly laid out. And you can do what you will with that. Upload it to Sage or Iris or... Uh, CCH, whatever you're using, or just work from Excel if you want to, that's fine. A lot of people were using the receipt manager, and they said to their accountants, look, we really like this, thanks, but can you give us something that will track basic income, please? And so we built this tool here, and this is for folks who are consultants, uh, business consultants or medical consultants, contractors, folks who run smaller companies who maybe do 20 or 30 invoices a month. It's not for folks who are doing hundreds of sales invoices every month. Uh, it's by no means a piece of bookkeeping software. But what this enables them to do is, just like the receipt manager, they can photograph a bill if they've raised one, or they can just bypass that and type the data in. So this month's consultancy to Tony was £5,000, put the day's data in and move on. But then it's building that income file inside the app as well. We've got some users who are using it to track it for dividend payments or an investment, or uh, for rental income they might have from one or two properties they've got on the site. So just a way of capturing stuff, and it's just more useful features for them. This one place scenario we described is where these sorts of launch buttons come in. And so, like I say, talking with Bankstream yesterday, we can now put a button on there which would load the, uh, the login to Bankstream Notes. So if you're using that system with your clients, they, they can then just log into there, annotate the three items you're not sure what I've done from my bank statement, and I'll go straight back to Bankstream from there. If they're using uh, Xero or Cashflow or Free Agents, any of those systems, you can press that and I can log into there. So I don't have to go to lots of different places. Uh, and if you do credit card payments and your merchant... Uh, company has given you a form that you can pop onto your website, we can link to that so they can almost pay you through the app as well and produce those sorts of scenarios. 
So there's really no end to the launch button. You don't want to make it too busy, but you can think through what's the main things that my clients need? What is it they're after that I can put on there that's going to make their life more simple in one place? And it's your firm, your brand, they're engaging every time. Uh, so a quick recap, what's been built has been um, user-driven. Uh, there's a huge appetite for apps, but still few firms are responding to it. So whilst we might be leading the way, and the ICPA support this, and other professional bodies do as well, and people like 2020 and those sorts of membership organisations have seen this, and they're encouraging the members and taking action on it, we're still only looking at maybe around 4% of the marketplace who have got an app. So from a point of differentiation, there's a fantastic opportunity to say we are different, let me show you one way in which we are. We're not just the same as the other accountant that you're considering just now. It's become the single critical interface. It is tested and working now. It requires minimal implementation from you. It takes between four to six weeks to make live and requires about an hour to an hour and a half's worth of your time over that period to get it live. So really low impact in that sense. Yes, please. If you have looked this up uh, and um, say contact use this, would it effectively time to us or would you be able to redirect it to somebody else? So it's going to use our system and do something. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, could, could he uh, um, uh, use that system that we paid for effectively, but direct it to another accountant? Or... Oh, okay. Um, so the, the question there is, if you had one of these apps, um, could a non-client use that app, but send the data to another firm of accountants rather than you? Yes, they could. Right. Um, the, we haven't heard any experiences of that happening at the moment, um, and really it would be a rather daft thing for that person to be doing, or for that other accountant to allow it to happen. Um, because the, they would not, whilst they might be using your receipt manager that's on there, they would be seeing all the other things about you, they'll be engaging your brand every time, um, they'll be here seeing your notifications that you would send out, and actually it's you that's serving them, it's you that's giving them something good and not their incumbent. And so we've seen it be instrumental in the opposite direction. People started to use that and go, actually, this is helpful, and my incumbent hasn't done this, and maybe it's the straw that broke the camel's back or something in that relationship but it's actually drawn people into your firm rather than people taking something you've invested in and using it in a different environment. Uh, and what about if there's new uh, apps that have come uh, uh, useful? What is the cost to add a new app into the system? Some, some new application? Okay, um, so if there's something new that gets created, like for example the receipt manager wasn't there on the first edition of this that we built, then within the uh, certain package that you might be on, if we add something new into that package, over time you'll be updated to the latest version of that as we do submissions to the store um, once or twice a year, you'll be updated to that latest version of the package. Uh, if you've got something that is an additional option um, from there, for example, there's a new feature we've just built, which will be coming on stream in a couple of months' time, where you can refer a friend. So you can press a button on there, it will generate a code, you can choose to send a text message, or you can send it via email or a social media channel, and it will recommend you to somebody. And, uh, as refer a friend to the account. To the account. So, yeah, so I might be using your app, and I think I want to refer you to Simon. I can press a button, and it will send a referral to Simon as a text message and say, I'm using these guys. I think they're great. You should use them. And if you use this code, they'll give you a free biscuit or something. So and it includes an incentive. Uh, that's right. <coughs> yeah, you, either as an incentive or as a... That made a good noise, isn't it? Um, either as an incentive or as a, uh, as a way of just tracking that that's come through, so you've got some visibility of it. Yeah, you talked about um, generating additional fee income. Um, can you give me an example? Uh, yes, of, of how firms have made money from doing this. Yeah. Yes, yeah, no, gladly. Um, I'm pleased you asked that question. Uh, so um, here is a case in example. Uh, Fuchs & Co. in South Wales. Uh, uh, Dave Collins there. Uh, and his clients actually called him up and congratulated him on the app to thank him for the features that are in there. Now, there hasn't been very much that we've done in our lives, in our lives, in our working lives, that has produced that sort of response from clients. So if you can generate that sort of goodwill, you've got a great opportunity to do a lot more with it from there. These guys, the Houston Partnership, uh, up in Glasgow, uh, then two quick stories that that encapsulates. One is that they uh, said to me when I saw him at Christmas time last year, he said, look, Dan, uh, when we bought the app from you, or before we bought the app from you, I predicted a story. So I sat back in my chair and looked around and get told a story now. I said, well, what was that, David? And he said, well, it was this, that one of my clients, one Friday evening, would be down the pub, uh, the pub uh, with uh, somebody that he knows. The question the advisor would come up, uh, and they would say, well, you should have a chat to David, and they'll be able to use my app there and then. He said, that happened the week before you arrived. And what happened was they were down there talking. He said, well, you should download David's app, his app. And so they downloaded the app together there and then in the bar, and he looked at the tools, looked at the information, said, yeah, this guy looks really just what I'm after. He sent him a message through the app there and then, 
and they met the following week and did business as a result. So rather than someone saying, well, Dan, you should have a chat to Simon and then have a couple of beers on the evening, I'll spend the weekend with my kids and do all sorts of things, and come Monday morning, I'm thinking, sure, there was someone that I was supposed to call today to have a chat about with the accountants. Then it would happen instantly there and then. Another one was through BNI. Um, there's another example of a local firm here in Colchester, ProTax Accounting, who've got this app. Uh, Lee Taylor, uh, he's got one and a half staff, and out of there, he's generated 625 users on his app which is fantastic. Street, so I was with yesterday, have 428. So they're a top 40 firm, he's got one and a half staff, and he's got more than them. And the reason he's done that is because he was, was, he's quite an evangelist for the thing. And so he would go to networking events, and he would say, well, I've got a free iPhone for you. And everyone would look at him and say, well, okay, I was a bit cheeky, but it looks like an iPhone. And he'd give them a little flyer, I've got some outside as examples, that looks like an iPhone, and says, well, I didn't you download the app. And he gets everyone to download the app there and then, and says, here's one thing you can all do as you leave today that's going to help you. You can track your mileage on the way home and shows them how to use it. And so then he's got 20, 40, 50 people in that networking room, all downloading his app, going, that's a really nice idea, using it, liking it, and then for the rest of the day, telling people about it. So he's one business, as direct referrals that have come out of that. So there's lots of other examples I can show you, but it's that referral generation that is the easiest way. You can do some great direct marketing. I'm going to see a client tomorrow morning where we've done some direct marketing with them, and the app has helped them win 15 grand's worth of new business from just one mail shot from there. But that he spent money on doing the mail shot, of course. So before you do any of those sorts of things, if you just let people know that you've got it and you encourage them to use it and you show them some of the value that's in there, the referral part will help you win new business before anything else. Can, can I just ask that, um, uh, I don't know how many thousands of accountants there are out there. Uh, have we got accurate figures of how many accountants have websites? Do we know? Um, the, the majority of accountants yep. now have websites, yes. They didn't about eight years ago, it was about 90% didn't. How many accountants have an app? About 4% of them are. So if we're talking about differentiating, we get a lot of calls, how do I differentiate my practice, Tony, how do I differentiate my practice? I tell them, I say, one thing sure as eggs is X. Every one of your competition has got a website that's all singing, dancing, and shows pictures, God knows what. But how many of your competition have got an app? So that may be something you guys want to think on before we go to lunch. <laughs> so if I may try to say thank you, Dan.